Yeah, it's all per person. Yeah. Right now it's a hundred dollars per person per night, basically. Um, and that includes the dead price of the lunch. Okay, good evening, Recording everybody. Recording in progress. It is now 5.01. I call this meeting to order. Um, for the record, my name is Huang Tran. I'm a chair of the FedRAC meeting. And uh, on my left is um, Council Member Linda Kochma, committee member. On my right is Council President Honda. She will be a voting member for today's meeting. And I believe we do have um, Council Member Asifa Dawson online. Oh, there she is. Yes, I'm here. Welcome. Do I miss any Thank you. members? And of course, we all, um, oh, I'm sorry. We do have um, Council Member elect Jack Wash here with us. Welcome, Jack. And um, welcome, our staff. All right. So, Moving on um, to public comments. Sherry, do we have any public comments? We do have Karen Fregado. Um, do I have to wear my mask when I talk or no? I, I'll, I'll leave it on. Um, thank you, President Honda, for having me speak to you and all of the FedRec Committee this afternoon, evening. Um, I am from the Arts Commission. My name is Karen Bragado, and I would like to talk to you about what we're doing in the Arts Commission as well as our budget. Uh, this year we got through contract for services. Uh, you know, that's the grants that we give out every year. Um, we have given out to 10 different groups. That has almost doubled the amount of groups that we give out. They are very diverse, very inclusive, um, uh, very uh, intergenerational. Um, um, and I'm excited to hear from all of them. We also, well, that takes about 85% of our budget, those um, contracts for services. We also have our traffic graphics box. If you've noticed the 26 boxes that are around <laughs> Federal Way that are fun to look at. Um, we're also teaming with the uh, Federal Way Public Schools. We're honoring those, peop uh, those students at our four area high schools. We're um, asking for arts donations from uh, students and faculty. When we pick the one that has the most uh, spirit, we will cover the box near the high school. We're also putting on a um, arts explosion. This is an arts exhibit. And everybody's seen arts exhibits from <clears throat> Bellingham down to Bremerton and everywhere in between. We want to put one on too, right here in Federal Way. Uh, it would be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Little did I know, we used to have an arts exhibit right here in Federal Way in the late 80s. Um, and it followed the direct course of what we want to do too. It actually um, rivaled uh, Bell, um, Bellevue's Arts Festival. I want to see that resurrected today. Um, but of course our budget is, is low. It, so low that it has been unchanged since its inception. We are stuck at $53,000 to have all of that. When we began uh, some uh, 20 odd years ago, we had five or six performing groups that we gave grants to. Now we have 10. Some of those performing groups, uh, the chorale about 15 years ago had over 100 singers. Now it has 30. The symphony 
um, still has five concerts a year. They used to have three different uh, performances for each of those concerts. Now they only have one. Um, Federal Way Arts will never die, but as the show goes on, they change. No performing groups practice here in Federal Way anymore. They go elsewhere. Um, basically, what we'd love to do is change that and have a, more, uh, have a better budget. And what I put in front of you is a chart showing the budget. Uh, the top with the, the red shows, well, that's like an executive summary. Below uh, on the second page shows the numbers per city that's taken directly out of their biennial budget, the amounts that they give towards the Arts Commission. These are just the amounts given to the Arts Commission for their grants, for their public art. It doesn't count their Performing Arts Center. It doesn't count their museums or um, art galleries, nothing like that. It's just grants. Along with that, from the biennial budget is their uh, total revenues and population, so we could get a per capita revenue. Compared to Federal Way, you expect it to be a one-to-one, -one, but it's not. You could read that on the page. It's rather depressing. So what I would love to do, and I know this year the um, adjustments for the biennial budget is a little too late. I'd love to put a bug in your ear <laughs> for the next biennial budget. We need an increase if we're going to save the arts in federal way. Uh, I propose that we increase it from 53,000, that's the amount that has been given to us, to 150 a year, increasing it exponentially and until it reaches the um, average between the three cities that uh, the mayor has indicated are the most important. That would be Kent, Renton, and Auburn. Uh, the mayor has received uh, this particular spreadsheet as well. He has commented, um, and I'm pretty sure we're all on the same page, that we want arts in federal way to grow. We don't want to give up the arts. If someone chooses just to pick up a Sharpie and do a protest sign, that is art. It's better than picking up a rock and throwing it through a window. We have something to say, and the arts explosion is a great way for people to say it, people to have sculptures that say exactly what they feel, kids to say what they want. We could have people come in with wonderful tattoos that say exactly what they wish. It's all wonderful, and it's all part of Federal Way, and it's all part of the Federal Arts. We want it here, and we want to increase in the budget. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the information. Go ahead. Any uh, question? Hi, Karen. Thank you. So a suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're we're talking about getting a grant writer or grant writers. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this, you know, might be through grants uh, that the other cities are receiving that type of money. Uh, but just a suggestion to look into, you know, probably by March, April, bring this up again because the budget we'll be discussing the budget by June, okay. May, June, and then will want to be reminded that this is a, an issue. And then you might explore how grants or grant writing might help. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you. So, President? Thank you. Uh, this is for John Hutton. John, do we still get any money from For Culture? We do get money from For Culture. Um, and that money, off the top of my head, Karen may know better what we get, uh, but I do believe we get 16,000 or more from, from uh, So I know when I was on the Arts Commission, we were not allowed to ask for culture for money for the Arts Commission because it went to Red, White, and Blues, basically. So with us not doing Red, White, and Blues for two years, I think, did, that, did we get the grant from For Culture for that? And where did that money go to if we got the grant? Could you look into that for I me, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Because I think that should go to the Arts Commission if it. Mm -hmm. May I answer this? Um, the, um, I had a, a, a talk with Pete von Rickbauer, who is part of the For Culture um, 
Council. And he mentioned ARPA money. It's not just one grant. It's like one in four, four grants possible. Please um, get your grant in. And I talked to the people um, who do the grant writing, you know, the super secret way to get it in. I could not do it. Um, it had to be through uh, someone who works for the city of Federway. So I am unaware right now if we have any grants for any of the other s uh, things that we are doing through the Federal Public Schools, through our arts explosion, through anything. I, I don't have any idea. Okay. Thanks, so, Karen. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments? No? Okay. There's thank no you. public comment. Okay. We are moving on to committee business. The first item is approval of summary minutes October 26, 2021. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the um, summary minutes October 26 of 2021. Is there any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 The matter passed 3-0. We are moving on to item B, catering services at Dumas Bay Center. Rob? Good evening. Ah. Hi, Council President Honda and Council members. My name is Rob Ettinger. I am the manager at the Dumas Bay Center. And before you tonight is a discussion about an extension for um, catering services um, using a contract with Cafe Pacific Catering. Um, some of the background is that our a longtime chef uh, resigned from his position um, beginning October 1st, and um, we contracted with Cafe Pacific in the interim um, to cover operational rentals that we had with food services. Um, as we are working through our um, business plan and moving forward, um, we, we realized that it will be important for us to contract with a vendor to supply catering services through what we have contracted for with, with rental groups. And the Duma Space Center does contract um, up to 12 months in advance. And so we currently do have contracts on the books for those 12 months. And with that in mind, um, we are recommending um, that we extend the contract with Cafe Pacific through December 31st of 22. Um, the financial impact is going to be covered by the cost savings from the chef that has resigned, as well as rental fees um, for all of the contracts. Um, and we have met with finance director Steve Groom um, and have discussed these options um, with him. And um, we both feel that this is the, the right direction to to move forward, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Let me piggyback on that and just say that, oh, that, that, that this will work within the existing budget. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, so I do have some questions. Yes. And I, I had sent some of these already to staff, and I was told that I, they would be answered tonight. So I'd like to know how many. Uh, <clears throat> caterers applied for the position, if anyone currently on staff was laid off because of this besides the, the chef who resigned, and if this covers all of the, the staffing, the, um, there, were, there was some vouchers for dishes in here for Cafe Pacific. We have dishes at Duma space, so I, I was confused as to why they were, they had to get more dishes, um, and I was told that was for a catering event, but I'd like to know exactly what the, this covers. Sure. So as far as the um, other vendors, this is a professional services contract. Um, this does not require us to bid that out. Um, it is a, a vendor that we have used in the past that was our in-house caterer who is aware of the full operations. He was with us for um, the first 11 years of our operation. Um, and it was someone that was, that knows the operation that was able to step in with um, honestly one day notice to bring him in to, to start catering for us. Um, we did not lay anyone else off. 
Um, we have retained our two cooks that were already on staff. As you, you know, we're just starting back up operations, so it's, it's really very quickly from when we started back to when the chef resigned. Um, so we were able to, to recruit back two of our staff members at this point. Um, and so no, no one was laid off. And if you would repeat, I think you had a third question. So when Cafe Pacific goes out to an event, mm -hmm. they bring their own staff to serve and that kind of stuff? Potentially. So, so this is a, sorry to interrupt. Um, this is more of a, a partnership contract with us. He will provide the food. Um, we will provide the cooking staff on site, um, but they do cook from their, their operation down in Auburn um, and bring a lot of that pre-made pre food to us um, to, to put out for the groups. But he won't bring his staff, so you'll be using your own staff? Um, he will bring us staff, and he does bring us staff. So I have two staff members that we currently have. They can't cover the entire operation. It's a seven-day, you know, three meals a day uh -huh. operation. So when we do not have staff, he does backfill with that. And then we, this, We've not rehired anybody else. Though. Then this contract will pay for those staff members? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions? Okay, uh, before we vote on this, I wanna mention that uh, because I am using my iPad to um, follow the agenda, so I won't be able to see anybody on Zoom that may raise their hands. So if somebody can kind of monitor that for me, please. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay. I think we are ready uh, for the motion. Uh, move to for this uh, recommendation to the consent agenda for the December 7th, 2021 meeting for approval. I'm hoping that's yeah. right. I, I don't have it in front of me either. I, I can it make a motion if, uh, uh. Can, okay. I move to forward the proposed amendment to the December 7th, 2021 consent agenda for approval. And I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 No matter, pass three zero. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are moving on to item C, RFB 21-012-F W C C slide replacement. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. So uh, before you is the policy question, should the city council approve staff to request bids for the Federway Community Center slide replacement? I'll give you a brief backup on that, uh, some backup information. Uh, the item was not included within the approved budget for the Federway Community Center slide replacement as proposed. It would be funded by ARPA funds um, allocation of up to $500,000. Should the city be awarded the King County Parks Aquatic Grant that we applied for, and I'll give you some more detail in a, in a moment. Um, if we get that, which we have a strong feeling that we will, we have a very viable product uh, or a project, and we have strong information that we think we'll get the $250,000 uh, for that, then we need to fill that gap with, uh, with ARPA funds is our idea. So in the fall of 17, staff noticed significant cracking in the concrete staircase uh, leading to the water slide in the recreation pool. The slide was shut down until we could properly assess the condition. We brought in a structural engineer from the outside. Um, we did a temporary fix that lasted, uh, it was a one year fix that was recommended. Uh, that was the best that the structural engineer could, could guarantee. We were able to get um, over two years out of that. Uh, so through some very hard work uh, to make that happen. So uh, that is the nature of the work. I think you have the memo, so I don't want to insult you by reading uh, to you. And I, uh, Council, or Council President Honda, I did get your questions. Um, so, I, I, and I apologize, I could have answered those in writing uh, to you prior, but uh, wanted to just kind of touch on it and I'm happy to uh, go further if needed. So a slide replacement, this is a very, very high profile amenity. It's very unique and it's expensive, obviously. 
uh, with a long manufacturing lead time associated with it. There's only a couple companies in the whole world that make these things. And obviously it's custom made for your facility to fit. And so it takes a long time. Um, the slide is crucial to revenue generation in the building. Uh, as you know, you've been there hundreds of times, each of you. Um, it is uh, crucial for revenue generation in respect to birthday parties, um, drop-in visits, members enjoy it every day. And it's also become a field trip destination for other organizations. All of the other cities in the area bring their day camps to us. All the YMCA's bring their day camps to us. Preschools bring their kids to us. So we have become a real destination and that is a main draw for that. Um, having no slide uh, for another calendar year is not a good look for the city. Um, it's a source of pride for the building and the city as a whole. Um, we get questions every day from members and visitors. They see the slide. It's obviously closed to them. They can't use it. Um, they're on us pretty hard about let's get this thing done. Um, and so, and that's exactly what we'd like to do. The project needs to go out to bid as soon as possible because of the long lead time. Our goal is to get this replaced in 2022. And the only way we can legitimately probably pull that off is to get it out to bid this year, uh, knowing the lead time is so long to get this thing built. Um, the city has applied again for the King County Aquatic Grant. Originally that grant, we had hoped and we had been led uh, to believe that it would cover the entire cost of the 500,000 potentially or more of this uh, amenity. Um, and then they came out with some clarification around COVID. They first, they delayed everything because of COVID obviously. And uh, then they said, no, 250 is the max that you can get. So uh, for any one project. And again, the purpose of using the ARPA funds uh, would be to fill the gap as the total cost is expected to be $500,000 or more. We have met um, many times with, uh, with uh, finance director, Steve Groom, who's standing behind me. And uh, um, he is here to answer any further questions about, about that. So just to let you know that we have, you know, not, we've absolutely met with finance. And so have, turn it over to Steve. Well, in fact, I have a not so technical pie chart <laughs> that I, uh, I, this is not going to dazzle you, but a picture is worth a thousand words for people that may be uh, 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 looking. Um, because, we're, because we're contemplating ARPA funds, as uh, Director Hutton mentioned, ARPA would be used to gap fill. The, the phase one of the pool slide replacement has already started and we're paying 34792 out of uh, operations. And that's the one number that we know for sure. The grant uh, fund that we, the, uh, the grant that we hope to get, expect to get is 250,000. What we don't know is the total project and this, and this agenda item is to go out to bid so that we can get that total. So by the time we come back, I imagine that we would have some, some, some clarity on, uh, on whether or not we have the grant. Now, does this, does this fit uh, the, uh, uh, is this the type of project that, we, that, that you might wanna consider using ARPA funds for? Well, it, 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 it's, it's prominent, it's urgent, it, 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 it does position the city more uh, uh, financially stable, and it also backfills one of the programs that has been impacted by the, uh, by the economic uh, uh, effects of COVID. So uh, I have a very simple pie chart to illustrate what it is we're hoping to attain after we get the uh, real numbers. And so that is my contribution at this point. Fair enough? Absolutely. And I also like to clarify that the grant we expect to be notified in December about the amount, and uh, but the actual allocation won't come until February. So they'll notify us, hopefully, that we're successful and we get the full amount of 250. We'll get that money um, likely in February is, is what they've told us. So, uh, and with that, can I answer any other questions? Thank you, John. Also, President. Uh -huh, thank you. So. Today, this is just going out for the bid. It's not saying that we'll use ARPA money for this. Is that correct? Or is this, con is this committing ARPA money? Uh, Steve, do you? I don't, think, I, I, I don't think we've made any ARPA decisions. However, if we do go out to bid, we need to, the city does need to have, can consider that ARPA would be our backstop. You know, I, I said it before, and I'm gonna, every time I see this, I'm gonna say it again. We, as a council, haven't decided 
how to use the ARPA money. Right now, how much have we spent? For something like 4.1 million out of nine, the nine million that we have for the year? We, I think we've spent almost half of it already, and we haven't even had a structured, well, we've had two very short meetings, but this isn't the way that we should be spending ARPA money in piecemeal. That I, I very strongly don't believe that this is the right way to do this, even if this is a good project. I'm not saying this isn't a good project, but what else is there that we need to be considering? Here's the tally of what we have allocated. The, uh, this, this is a table that, that, that uh, Tim Johnson and I brought to council a few meetings back. And the third column is what we've actually spent to date. We have issued checks uh, for essential pay uh, for, for, for grocery workers. The middle column is the allocated approved. Uh, the, of the 650000 for grocery workers, we don't expect to spend that whole amount. The second amount, the 2372 that's two components. One of those is the trailer lease for the park staff at the operation shop, and then there's 2072 for police vehicles. Uh, and then below that, we have 50000 for broadband, which we do expect to spend. And then, uh, I apologize, I don't off the top of my head, I can't remember what the 700,000 for government services and Tim Johnson was speaking to that. So what we've approved so far is 3.7 uh, and what we've spent is 60,000. Uh, so we're keeping track as we go. The total, gra the, the total ARPA fund for the city is 19.2 and you're exactly right. We want to guard every, guard every penny. So what, uh, so what this shows is what we've approved, what we've spent. As you go to consider, of course you're thinking prioritizing every project that comes before you if it's urgent then that forces you to consider well if we had the whole thing would this in fact uh, meet our criteria for urgency so that's that's as close as I can come to giving you up-to-date information on what we've approved and spent so far so what happens if we spend in 2020 between now and next June or July when we get the next amount of from ARPA I'm if we spend that, more than what we have. I'm counting 19.2. We've, we've, we received half, and, I, and, right. and it's, it's a certainty that we're going to get the other half. So I'm counting it all as one total, 19.2 million. So we can spend more than the 9 million we have and be okay this year. Hmm. I just I, I nod cautiously because I'm certain that we won't. <laughs> but, but yes, if, if we absolutely had it, uh, something, then, then, then we would spend using city money knowing that we would get ARPA money, but I don't think that's the case. I think in, in, July, in July, in January, very soon in January, we need to have an ARPA meeting, even if it's not on a Tuesday, where the council and staff sit down and we hammer this out because I, ha I have a hard time supporting this. I just, I don't want to be doing this. And, um, EJ sent an email out on Friday saying that we got 2.5 million from the state for the roundabout on 373rd, and we would use 800,000 of ARPA money. Where does that come from? I mean, seriously, we can't continue to do this without a plan, a financial plan. Understood, and and we are thinking what EJ related to you is, what, is, is exactly what we're trying to do with as much as we can, come up with projects where ARPA backfills a piece so that we leverage it to complete, to complete projects, but, don't spend, but, but not spending ARPA on the whole entire project, which kind of is what we're looking to do here. Trying, we're, we're trying to be judicious. But we still need council input, not just staff input, and so far that's all that this is. It's, it's staff input that's been spending the money. You come to us, you need it now, council goes, okay. I'm, that has to stop at some point until we have an over, overall and that, plan. And that is absolutely true. We, we can't spend without your approval. So we, we can't approve contracts without your approval. So um, we're trying to balance being giving you the information that we have when we have it and feeling our way forward. Agreed. Thank you. Committee members, um, Coach Ma. Thank you. I, I'm certainly not adverse to this whole idea because you said it was program, uh, a backfill for a program impacted by COVID. My issue is, and I'm in agreement with uh, Council President Honda, that we need to have an overview of what the opera money is to be used for. And I believe, you know, we, we keep using it for city projects, but I believe a part of that is to go to the community. And I need to know what that is and exactly 
what the ARPA, the requirements for the ARPA fund money, what it's to be used for. I've, I've never seen that. And so um, while I generally believe that this could be uh, a, a, an approved use for ARPA funds, for backfill, for a program impacted by COVID, I don't know that for sure. I'm, so I'm, I'm nervous about it. But at any rate, I'll vote for this. But I do agree with Council Member Zahan that we need an overview as soon as possible. And in that, we need to know what should go to the community, the amount that should go to our community. Well, thank you. I do have a question, Steve. Um, so, so this um, proposal is only to ask authorization for bids, correct? That's correct. Okay. So if we approve this, this doesn't mean we are obligated to spend the money, correct? That's correct. The solicit solicitation of bids is, like you said, it's a request for, for a bid. It's not an offer for a job. So it's all subject to council appropriation and authorization. But that said, our plan is we don't have a backup plan right now. So it, it's important to have that in your mind as you vote. I mean, I do share the concern uh, from uh, committee members uh, Linda Koshmar and uh, Council President Honda that we are kind of doing things in a piecemeal. Um, so we try to avoid not to do that, but at the same time, you know, I don't want to hold up the potential um, good bid that we can use to replace what we re really need at the community center. So by voting yes for this, um, it's basically help us move forward, but it doesn't 100% obligate us to spend. That's correct, and, and it, and it okay. will also clarify the total amount that we're gonna need. Okay, I just wanna make sure that. Okay, very good. Are we ready? Yes. Uh, Council Member yes. Dawson? Oh. Yes, go ahead, please. Leader? Yes, yeah. hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, thank you so much for the, for allowing me to ask this question. So I just wanted to understand the pie, pie chart. Um, when you have 250 ARPA and then 250 grants, are we saying, is that actually what we're looking to do? Or um, how much, yeah, how much of that is ARPA really and how much of the 250 is from grants? And then if we don't get the grant money and if we decide we don't want to use ARPA money, is there um, the portion that we are paying that that little um, part in the um, in the chart? Um, would that increase, and where would we get the money? That's question number one. But my comment is, um, you know, from being on LTAC, one thing I that we've noticed is, whenever we lose um, uh, partners or we lose, um, I should say, customers who utilize our our amenities and our services. Um, and when they go somewhere else because we can't accommodate, we tend to lose them permanently. So I would support that it gets repaired um, and that we start using it um, and not lag on that because we do not want to, um, you know, you stated that there were all these different um, nonprofits and different programs that do come and use our our, our program. Our, um, the facility. So I don't want to lose that and I don't want to lose the momentum. So I think moving forward and like um, we all, you all just stated, this is just um, going up for a bit. So I do wholeheartedly support it and I hope that it gets um, started or um, that council could, um, that we would have the funds to move forward um, quickly so that it would be um, taken care of and ready for, for um, use by the community. But um, back to my question, I really would like to look at the, at that pie chart and understand it better. Um, so thank, thank you. you. I can answer it very, you know, Council Member Asifa Dawson, I think you have just asked me the most difficult question because the pie chart, what it showed is that we are spending 34,000 for demolition out of current operations. We have an estimate, we have a ballpark of 500,000 that we're guessing that's the ballpark that the uh, uh, slide replacement will come in at. And if we are successful in getting the grant for 250,000, then then that leaves the city with how do we how do we come up with the other with with the remaining 250,000? And there's only two answers. Uh, it would come from uh, 
because the community center has been suffering during the economic consequences of COVID, then that means that, that the general fund would have to, to, to help out, and then the alternative is ARPA. Uh, as you all know, during every budget, we have a tremendously difficult time uh, squeezing every bit of service we can out of, out of the general fund. So when we have alternatives, why then we want to look to those. That's why we're looking to ARPA, because this, this, this project does seem to be an excellent one-time project that would fit one-time funds. Uh, in later on this agenda, you're going to see our financial results through 10 months, and we have revenues that are coming in favorably, and we also have expenses that are favorable. So there is some wiggle room for general fund if you choose not to use ARPA. Uh, so I think when the time comes for, to make your ARPA decisions, why then we will also be able to have uh, a, m a more complete picture of the of the 2021 results, and whether there's uh, savings that we can also uh, apply. So. Um, I the only the only options that there are since the community center doesn't have available funds are whether we use ARPA or whether we can find uh, how the general fund which has a lot of demands on it including public safety so d does that answer the question it's a difficult yeah. question to answer but I don't want to shy from it no thank you so much I appreciate it um, this question is for um, John Hutton um, is is this program revenue generating or and how much I mean is it significant enough for us to consider it revenue um, to offset any of this? It's part of the revenue piece, and it's a large part because it's the most standout amenity within the community center. Obviously, it's very visually attractive. It's very fun. It's fun for all ages. Everybody likes it. So we notice when Open Swim uh, is a lot more well attended when the slide is operational than when the slide is not operational. Uh, when there's no slide, it's kind of a, a disappointment to little kids and their parents uh, that they don't get to go down the slide because we're the only one in town. We're kind of, you know, we're the only indoor pool uh, that has a really fun, cool amenity, and it becomes a destination spot for birthday, birthday parties, as we mentioned. And other people's day camp, which you alluded to with the other nonprofits and the other cities and stuff that come as a destination, this is their field trip to come to the Federal Way Community Center from Auburn or Kent or Renton or Olympia. We get every other city visits us because it's such a fun pool. They can go to a pool in their own city, but they can't go to a pool with a slide. And so the slide becomes the, a real huge draw. And then those kids tell their parents how much fun they had at day camp on Wednesday, and we see them two weeks later on a weekend that the family comes up. So yeah, it, it is a revenue drive. It's hard to quantify. Uh, but it's absolutely real, and there's, it's unquestionable that we do better when the slide is operational uh, than we do when it's not. Does that answer your question? It, yes, it does very well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Council President, um, thank you. Is it possible to, since it's revenue generating for people from out of town, which I don't know if they're considered tourists, if they're, they're so local, but uh, to get money from LTAC? Did I open I don't a think can of uh, with My understanding of LTAC is it usually involves heads and duds. Mm -hmm. I don't think a whole bunch of people come up. Okay. You know, we're not Grey Wolf. We're a little different than that. But uh, I, I, I don't know that LTAC would be appropriate, but I see uh, Director Groom has his hand up. And I'll also add that the entire budget for LTAC revenue is 150000 annually, so that would be limited and, you know, that would add to the uh, demands on it. Okay, just, just wondering. Um, can you tell me how much the original slide cost and what would the expected lifespan of this new slide be? I can't tell you what the original because it came as part of the overall building uh, okay. when we built the building. So I don't know that, that I can research that and find out what that price was within the building, but I don't have that uh, off the top of my head, uh, Council President. Um, I think the new slide is, uh, and Autumn has been working on the bid a, a little bit with uh, LEAF, maybe a little bit more than me, but I, I'm thinking it's 25 to 30 years with the new uh, with the new uh, slide and staircase being of, of uh, different material that that is kind of resistant to failure, the problem with the with the slide and the and the uh, the, the failure point was concrete staircase and concrete, no matter how good it is, 
is susceptible to um, the rigors of a very hot, steamy environment and a lot of chemical. And so, and then a ton, just a ton of use. You put 5, 10, 15, 20,000 steps a day up at any staircase, uh, kids and adults running up and down the stairs, the new staircase will not be made out of concrete that can potentially fail ever. So I, I think it's a much longer, it'll probably last, I'm going to guess, 30 years. That will be part of the bid um, to, to see what life expectancy and John, um, is, is required. When, yeah. when we were talking to Leaf, he, he he did indicate that there would be warranty language from the that he would expect to see in the right. in the bid packages in the neighborhood of 20 years on a warranty. So we'd ha we would expect a longer life because right. I'm also thinking about replacement cost as well. It would be interesting to see what the original slide cost. I'm sure it's somewhere in the the paperwork when the building was built. Yeah, we can certainly research that. I'll support going out for a bid, but at this point, I don't support using ARPA funds until we've had our, our discussion and deliberations on how that money is going to be used. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Committee members, uh, Coach Mark? Uh, thank you, uh, Council Chair Tran. I would make motion now, if you're amenable to that. Uh, I move to forward authorization to request bids for the Fitterway Community Center slide replacement to the December 7, 2021 City Council Consent Agenda for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 The matter passed 3 0. And we are moving on to item D Washington State Department of Correction Master Agreement, <coughs> Class 5 Community Restitution Programs. Adam, welcome. Good evening, Chair Tran, Council President Honda, committee members, thank you for your time. Before you tonight is the Washington State Department of Corrections Community Restitution Program Master Agreement. In 2019, the city entered into its initial master agreement with the DOC to provide work crews throughout the city. They have provided work crews um, throughout Town Square Park, the Town Center Steps, Performing Arts and Events <laughs> Center, as well as some illegal dump site cleanup over the past two years. Unfortunately, in 2020, as with a lot of us during COVID, that program shut down. During that time frame as well, they made changes to their master agreement to help protect their workers as well as their supervisors. Our current contract does expire in June of 2022. They have come back to us with new language in a master agreement and asked that we move forward with a new master agreement, voiding the old one to bring us um, up to standard for what they do with all of their other contracts. So the one before you is that. In addition, throughout our last budget cycle, we allocated additional funding to the DOC work crew program. And so we would like to, at this time, ask that we enter into a new agreement and create a budget of up to $75,000 on this contract to allow for additional cleanup throughout the city. And I believe Steve has a little bit more insight financially in regards to this as well. Just a slight bit, and all I'm gonna say all I'm going to add is that this is within the current budget, so there's no financial impact. This is, this is within the city's existing budget. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I know there was a couple that came up via email, and if those are still questions, I'm happy to answer those at this time. Thank you, Adam. Council President Hunter. Thank you. So the, <clears throat> the questions were, uh, this contract started in July, July 1st, 2021, and it's November, so... That's just simply when they sent it to us, when they made adjustments. At that point in time, they did shut back down again. They had opened back up in June, and we were operating under our current contract, which was signed in 2019. When they shut down again, we waited to move forward with this until they were certain that there wasn't any additional changes to their work crew program before we brought a new contract before council. Okay, thank you. So nothing's been signed. We're still operating under our old agreement. Thank you. And um, are the workers paid for the, the work that they do, or is this a condition this is, of their This is in their lieu issues? of, this is in lieu of jail or to work off fines that they may have. Okay. And they're not all City of Federal Way um, crew. They may be from Seattle or other places around King County. We do pay uh, Department of Corrections a per day cost per worker that um, arrives on their crew though. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Committee members. 
as well. Uh, thank you. I, so I don't, um, it, describe to me, are, are they totally only cleaning up in Federal Way or is it in King County as well? Our program only cleans up in Federal Way. Department of Corrections does have contracts throughout King County with other cities, but that would be something that would be a separate crew, separate supervisors. If supervisors pick up in Federal Way and come to one of our projects, they're in Federal Way and dedicated to us that entire day. So if I'm in I'm John Q. Public, um, what am I going to see? What, what are they going to be cleaning up? Um, they rake out the beds at the Performing Arts Center. They pick up litter all around the old Target property, Town Center steps, litter throughout Town Square Park, litter and um, leaves and other things throughout the beds all up and down Pete Von Reichbauer. They've been back in the Hylobos. They've been at Steel Lake Park picking up um, garbage at illegal dump sites. It's kind of a wide variety um, that you would see. It depends on the day and where the need is within the city that day. Just wondering if they've been at the Performing Arts Center lately. Yes, <laughs> you've probably seen them. They were there today. They were? Oh, yep. Okay. Oh, that's good because I saw the weeds the other day. <laughs> yeah, they, they, it's something that they're constantly working on. And they just started back up again last week. So we have um, not had them as much as we would have liked because of COVID and safety protocols, but they're back now. Thank you. Thank you. I, so I have one more question. <clears throat> Down in the south a few years ago, I saw a group of prisoners doing work along the, the highway mm -hmm. and they had a, a correction, uh, an officer with a gun watching them work. So that's not how this works, right? No. No guns present, no. <laughs> nothing like that at all? No, and the supervisors are typically supervising two to three at max uh, workers. So there's a very short ratio of supervisors to workers to make sure that they're able to keep tabs and keep them on track. Okay, thank you. Re reminds me of a movie I just watched, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty interesting. Uh, so, uh, Chair Tran, I have a motion. Yes, go ahead, please. Thank you. I move to, to forward the proposed agreement to the December 7th, 2021 consent agenda for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? I'm just wondering, do we include the amount of money in the uh, <coughs> consent agenda for, I mean, does it? It, it is not necessary. Not no. necessary. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. We have a motion and a second. And no more questions. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The matter passed 3 0. Thank you, Autumn. Thank you. And now we are moving to item E, Wi-Fi site lease amendment number one with DM Ventures FW Center LLC. Thomas, welcome. Thank you, Chair Tran, Council President Honda, Committee Member Koshmar. Uh, before you all make this really quick, um, that name has actually changed quite a few times since we've been in this lease since 2005. Um, with, uh, with them, it started with J&Y Investments and has changed many, many times through the recession and now to its current um, DM Ventures. We use the site for uh, Wi-Fi site point-to-point -point links as well as having a Safe City camera on top of it. Um, we, this existing lease that we have, this is an amendment one to it, uh, concludes this year. Uh, this is amendment one to allow um, a potential use of a five-year uh, renewal period. The current lease has two of those options, so we are exercising one of them with this proposed uh, lease. And uh, the total for uh, the next five-year chunk is $22,260 um, over the five years, and that comes out to about $4,452 $4, a year. And that's including uh, the electricity that we pay for. That's it. Any questions? Committee members, any questions? Mm -mm. Look like you get on. I have easy. none. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. I will en entertain a motion. All right. Go ahead. I move to forward the proposed site lease amendment to the December 7th, 2021 consent agenda for approval. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a, sec and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Matter passed 3 0. Thank you. Thank you. We are now moving on to number 
F. AP voucher 10 16 2021 through November 15 2021 and payroll vouchers from the 1st of October to um, October 31st of 2021. Chase, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Council Chair Tran, Council President Honda, and Council Member Coachmar. The four year order accounts payable vouchers in the amount of $3,622,139.44 and payroll vouchers in the amount of $3,820,404.11. Um, these are fairly standard to prior months um, as far as amounts, and we'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you may have on these vouchers. I know that we sent out an email prior to the meeting, but my understanding is that there's some additional questions. And so we'd be happy to answer any of those that you may have. Thank you, Chase. Yep. Yeah. So, may, may I speak? <laughs> <laughs> yes? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, so. The reason I asked about the cellular service at the PAC is I know we are responsible for any and all bills at the PAC. It's our building. I have just never seen a cellular bill for the PAC, and I'm concerned about the rest of the PAC, and if we're going to get hit with huge, a huge number that we need to cover for the end of the year. You know, we've had COVID. I understand it's been closed. We still have the expenses. People have still been employed there. So that, that's a concern. Will we, see, will we see anything with the PAC and how the finances are? Yeah, so it is in the monthly financial report each right. month, as well as um, we're not bringing any amendment to the budget that is going through a second reading on December 7th for additional funding for the Performing Arts and Event Center in 2021. So the or 2022. The supplements that we've given the PAC so far have covered everything we need to cover. That's correct for the 2021-2022 budget. We're not expecting any surprises like we had last year or the year before. There's not an additional amendment in the budget amendment for December 7th. Okay, so are we going to continue to see this cellular service as a something we need That's to cover? That's an ongoing expense as well as we also charge um, multiple other IT expenses to the 115 Performing Arts and Events Center Fund. Okay. And so we pay for multiple IT services. Okay. Um, my other question that um, I appreciate the answers that you guys provided, but it, it raised more questions. Yeah. On uh, unclaimed property, I hadn't seen that before. And I, as you must know by now, Director Groom, I do go through every single voucher. So I found that really interesting because that's unclaimed property. So why, so did, if you could explain that a little bit more, you found checks that weren't cashed. Correct. And you went to the states that they, the vendor was from and you gave the state the money, the yeah. check? Yeah, so we have to remit the money to the state that the business is in. And so we, we have to do due diligence by reaching out to these businesses. So we send letters, we try to get them to cash their checks. And if they don't, we have to send it to unclaimed property within the state that the business is in. So we must have been doing that before, it just wasn't yeah. noted. That's correct. I, that was really interesting to me. Um, and then the Cafe Pacific plates, that caught my attention because I know we have plates at Dumas Bay and at wherever else, we uh, the PAC. Yeah, I think the backup showed that it was actually the services oh, provided okay. by them. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, that was it. I, I appreciate you responding, and uh, thank you for taking time to yeah, do Yeah, we're always thankful for all your questions. We're glad you all are looking at it and holding the city accountable for what we're spending. So thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, as always, um, I really appreciate um, Council President for asking a a lot of good questions, so thank you. Yeah, I appreciate her going through every single voucher. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a very time consuming, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Council Member uh, Ch uh, Chair Tran, I, I have a motion. I move to forward the vouchers to the December 7, 2021 consent agenda for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Matter passed 3-0.
We are moving on to item G, monthly financial report for October 2021. Oh. Director Room. Well, I'm going to share that though. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. <coughs> I'm sorry, did you introduce the item? I was fumbling with technical stuff over here. Oh. Are we on monthly we, financial report? We are waiting for you. I apologize. That's all right. One of these days I need to trade places in, in uh, what Chase Donnelly presents on, uh, and, then, and then sharing this one, because this, uh, this is the fun one for me. Uh, uh, and I think, uh, committee, you've, in your packet, you've got the usual uh, material, and I trust it's familiar. But this month I get to share the, not only the financial state of the city through October, but it's all, I also get to share our first month of results of our, of our investment program. And so I think you're going to be interested and pleased. And if I can figure out how to advance, we will move forward. Uh, as, 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 as we're now doing, uh, we present a cover memo that gives you the summary statement. The very first two sentences show you how the, how the city's revenue and expenses are doing, and then I can make it really big. And so what this says is that through 10 months of the year, we, this, is the, this is the financial results mm -hmm. through October, our revenues are favorable compared to budget by almost a million dollars, and expenditures are favorable uh, also by a, by a million dollars, but the difference is, is that revenues, that's cash in the bank. We've, we've received it, we know it, we have confidence, a lot of certainty. Expenditures, we have a little bit less certainty because as you know, uh, there can be delays and lags for in invoices coming in. Uh, not with payroll and, and salaries and benefits, that's, which is a large part of our, of our budget, but for the remainder, uh, there's a little bit of a lag. And also, uh, for, in our effort, in our attempt to make this slightly more interesting, on your, in your packet you also saw that we've done a couple of graphs, and it tells you the exact same thing. Through 10 months, you can see that the revenue of $47 million is just a little bit high, and that's what a million dollars looks like on a graph with a small scale and the expenses are favorable, and then the percents are below. So we're about 2% favorable on, on revenues, which I think is, is concrete. You know, that's cash in the bank. And the expenses are, are favorable, 2.3%. And we'll see how that goes as the, as the rest of the year uh, finishes. But there's not much year left to go. Uh, I have a cash graph, and if you look on our screen, you will notice that, that the cash bumped up in total again uh, in September. Now, don't get too excited because that's just our normal property tax coming in. In a couple of months, we're gonna pay our debt payments in December and it'll go back down. However, isn't it gratifying to see that the cash balance in total for the city is stronger than it's ever been? And if you, on this chart, the yellow little, the little yellow bars, that's how much we keep in our checking account. And the first of the month, we generally have a payroll. So we do have a sizable uh, balance at the first of the month every month. Green is the bulk of the city's cash, which is, which is invested in the state pool. But if you look down there at the bottom, there's that little blue box. We have accomplished four uh, investments this month, and I would love to tell you about them. Um, on October 6th, we made our first million dollar investment. A couple of months ago, we came to this committee and described what we were planning to do. And in fact, uh, during the month of October, we did four of them. So this is a new item for our report. And as you can see in this little table, what this says is that of the total $78 million of, of the city's cash, $74 million is still in the state pool where it's earning eight basis points. That's a fancy way of saying eight one hundredths of 1%. So if $74 million was in your money market account earning 0.08%, you would expect to earn $59,000 in interest over a year. And this is a variable rate. Uh, this, this acts like a variable rate money market account. And, this, and, the, and, the, and the, not complaining about what the state treasurer does, that they have liquidity and every city can draw it out whenever they need it. But, but, but down below, you can see the $4 million investments we've made. When we last presented to you, we hoped we were going to get 40 basis points, and we've gotten closer to 60. Well, that's better than we had planned. So what this means is that $4 million, which is about 5% of our total, is going to earn 24000 over a year's time. That means that 5% of our total cash is earning 29% of our total revenue. And we're going to con continue to do this, $4 million every single month. And the reason we're only doing four is we're trying to pace ourselves and not expose ourselves to all just the interest rate risk that's a, that, that exists right now. So in total, 
you can see that uh, our average yield has come up a bit. And over the next 12 months, you would expect to see 83,000, not just 50, 59. And that's only after one month. So the, the uh, significant increase, of course, is due to the four $1 million uh, uh, investments that we've made. Uh, if you look at a pie chart of the total city's cash, you can see that there is still quite a bit still left in, this, in, in the state's pool, in the state investment pool. But what you also see is you have these little tiny pie slices. So you're seeing a little bit of diversi diversification. Uh, not that we think that there's anything risky about the U.S. Treasury or the Federal Home Loan Bank or Fannie Mae. Those are all government-sponsored enterprises. So they're all AAA rated, so, so as far as safety goes. There really isn't a whole lot of reason to diversify by issue or what we were doing at each point was just grabbing the best yield that was available at the time. So if I look at diversification by uh, maturity date, we're in October 21 and I've uh, put a little circle, a little square over each of the Octobers so that you can see all we did is we bought a three year uh, uh, investment out into October and then we started working our way back for three more. And so when October of 2024 rolls around, we'll have $1 million that matures, we'll reinvest it at whatever the rates are at that time, but there'll only be $1 million at risk for the prevailing rates at that, at that point in time. So our total strategy is, you know, these are the dates that we're going to be filling for maturity dates. The red ones are the ones that we just did this month. We did October 24, and then we did the three previous ones. In November, uh, this, I'm, I'm presenting the results for October, so, I'm, so I'll say that in November we're going to uh, invest a million dollars, and then we'll do the three previous. We've already done it. We did the last one this morning. And then we'll continue to do that once a month until we get to June of 2025 when we purchase that one. By the next month will be the next month when we only have one uh, million dollars that matures. We'll reinvest it, and then we're just, it'll become very boring and not very interesting. So this is as interesting, interesting as I can make it. But let me just tell you once, for the sake of disclosure, how do we do a million dollar investment? Well, the first thing is, is we, do, is we transfer a million dollars out of the state pool. We take it out of that low earning rate. Uh, one person on our staff does a wire transfer, and then, and then the next thing we do is we check to see what treasuries are yielding. And the treasury tells us every day what yesterday's rates were. We pick the maturity date, then we, and then we, we have, th we have three brokers that we've had uh, approve. We've, we've gone, had them confirm all their credentials. And so we want them to know that we can choose any one of them just, just to be competitive. And then when we get on the phone with them, why we ask them what are treasuries yielding, what are agencies yielding for that particular maturity date. That means that at any point in time, all we have to do is choose the best available option on that particular day. And that's how we go about d serving the city. Then what we do is we, is we write up a rationale for every investment. And in the back of your package, pages 15 through 18, if you really wanted to know what we were thinking on the day when we did each one, you would see a sheet that looks like this. In fact, we've got all four of them. First paragraph gives a full description of what it was that we're buying, what the, who the issuer is, uh, whether we bought it at a discount or a, or, a, or a premium and what the actual yield is. We make a... Uh, we, we, we document the, uh, our observations on our liquidity position. How much money did we have in the bank? Why did we think we could invest a million dollars? We also make a statement about safety, why we think that this is a safe investment. Then we also uh, record what the yield is for this particular uh, investment and then what the comparables were, what our choices were. And, then, and as you can see, the yield on this one was 64 basis points, which was 56 basis points better than what our uh, state pool will. Then we also record whether we're buying a callable bond, and we plan to buy no callable bonds. We just record that we were intentional. We also, make a, we also record what our diversification was by issuer and by maturity date. We also record what the economic outlook was on the day we made the purchase. And lastly, we have two people sign it that we're not just making our investments on with, with one person with what one person thinks. So we've got a little bit of internal controls, a little bit of internal accountability. We don't expect anybody to ever read this. We're happy to show it to the auditors when they come in and say, why did you buy what you bought? But it's not terribly difficult to, to jot down what we were thinking. So we ha here at the city have a million dollar investment team and I'd like to introduce you and it's people that you know. This is us, we all huddle around my desk. We plan what we're gonna do. We talk about what we're gonna do and then when we get on, and then we put a broker on the uh, speakerphone and we find out what we're, 
what's available and this is uh, this is your this is your city team hard at work putting our money to work bringing in a little bit more revenue than we used to so I wanted to give them some credit that uh, Sherry's over here taking taking notes for us Ch chase you know and then Linda is uh, kind of semi cognito she's she, but that's 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 all four of us and so that means if I was to get hit by a bus the three of them know how to do this so that's a good thing too so so just to wrap up the investments, we, we got $4 million done in October. Our average yield was better than we had hoped, 5% uh, of the port. Now, this is, this is a message that you, the city council, could, could tell anybody you wanted to in the committee because this is the governance under, under your watch. We're putting city money at, to work, and so far we've got 5% of the portfolio earning 29% of the, of, uh, of the investment revenue for, for the city, and we're going to improve that every single month. Um, we also have new to your packet. We, we know that we always report business license revenue. What we thought we'd do is we would try to record some of the activity behind that. And all this is is a graph uh, of January through October. Blue is the current year. And this is the, the graph is the number of business licenses were issued. And we find this interesting. This isn't dollars. This is number of business licenses. And so you look back, there isn't, it, it, it isn't particularly comparable you know, each June is high or low, you know, that kind of does, there doesn't seem to be any seasonality, but this is also interesting to, the, to see how many businesses are up getting licensed in the city uh, currently. Uh, and you can look at, you know, look at last year, if that's of use to you, it's a nice little reference chart. So after that, uh, in your packet, we also have uh, the usual charts for sales tax revenue. It continues to come in higher than last year and higher than budget. Uh, the, by quite a bit, it's it's significant. And so this this is the, this seems to be the single biggest economic uh, indicator for the city. It's also the most material because on the on the uh, axis, that's a 16 million dollar budget, and it's coming in better. If we look at utility taxes, it's kind of the same story. It's coming in better than last year, better than budget, and that's also uh, a, that speaks strongly to how we're how we're performing this this year. And the real estate excise tax, this. This is remarkable, and this is this is a function of both volume of real estate uh, transactions and the dollar amounts are increasing. So we budgeted cautiously, and and the uh, and the revenue is coming in uh, very favorably. Now this is restricted revenue. This is restricted for streets and parks projects. So this just gives us some 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 uh, reserves that we can be able to to look at and apply to the things that are on the list. There's a long list of projects, and EJ and and John Hutton. Have, will not be shy when it comes to be budget budget time next year so just in just in in, in conclusion i want to make sure every month we come and, and give you a, a an accountable transparent report on how the city revenues are doing they're favorable expenses are also favorable but we're watching them because there could be invoice lags october we invested four million and we will continue to report every month and i'm pleased to bring uh, good news always happy to take any questions and i always want to put as my final slide that we're trying to be an increasingly well-managed city and uh, the finances want to be a part of that so thank you Steve thank you for that report excellent any members do you have any questions for Steve go ahead please thank you uh, Steve thank you very much uh, uh, interesting we used to talk about you know the different revenue between the different <laughs> sales tax areas such as the Commons Mall and the Costco area and the, I don't know if you still look at that the sales tax from the different retail areas you know I know that that we do get the confidential sales tax information and we don't disclose it by uh, any individual retailer mm -hmm. but by by uh, uh, geographic zones mm -hmm. I haven't looked into that I will you know that'd be interesting uh, I'm just curious um, I'm really curious to see how much we've lost in the Commons Mall area since mm -hmm. Sure, because we want to keep our thumb on the pulse of what's going on with the economy, not just that it's good globally. You know. uh, what Thank I'd really like to see in the future, though, is a matrix of the bond issuances that we have outstanding with the maturity dates and the interest yields. On our, on our debt that we've issued? <coughs> okay. Yeah. The, I think we used to have six or seven outstanding bonds. It, we used to have a matrix that I could look at, and I haven't seen that in a long time. I'd be happy to do that. I've, I've been a little bit hesitant about making too many changes to our monthly report, but mm -hmm. since you're asking, I would uh, love to. Yeah, I'd like to see the maturity dates and the current interest rate returns plus 
what the interest rate return is if it were when it's callable mm -hmm. or if it's callable. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. I would be interested uh, in the future uh, finding out how much Sound Transit is paying the, the city in um, uh, fees or uh, what I want to, uh, you know, when they get their building permits. Fees and permits paid by Sound Transit. I will look into that. I, you know, I, I know. We had talked about this for a while before they started their work here, and we're told that we would be getting some some money from them. So I would just be interested in how much that is on a monthly basis. Sure. That we're, we're I think getting. I've heard some discussion internally. I don't have it off the top of my okay. head. Yeah, and it may be a fixed amount, but I'll find out. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and Chair I would also like to know. I believe we have a um, for. Um, affordable housing, a, um, if they build in the downtown core, that they are allowed to um, not pay for the school impact fee or the fire impact fee, I, I believe. Is that, I think we were going to look at that, whether that was, I think it was open-ended and we were going to see if that was. I talked with Brian Davis and EJ at our last meeting and they're going to look at that and bring it back to us. In, in what meeting? Uh, soon. No, I mean what meeting? Oh, the last council meeting. Oh, at the last at a week. Council, yeah, at a, last at week. a regular council meeting? Yeah, I talked with them last week at the council yeah. meeting about that. Yeah. And they will talk to us. They'll bring that, they'll look into it and bring it back to us. At a committee meeting or a council meeting? Uh, we didn't. Oh, whoever. <laughs> yeah. We, we didn't come up to that level of where. Okay. okay. <laughs> wherever okay. you'd like it to go, we can send it. Pro, I, I would, I would think probably LUTC. Where, but, wherever. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, Steve, I know I said this before, um, but I really want to say it again because this is re really, really great. I love the s your summary, your chart and graph it. It's easy to follow, um, especially the summary. Instead of us going through the report 50, 60 pages, we can just look at a few pages and know the health, financial health of the city. So I really, really wanted to, um, to, to you know, tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, so right now we are putting away four million dollars per month, right, yeah, into this uh, new investment, um, and we are going to do that for nine months. Nine months, and that, that'll get us to thirty-six million, which would be half of half of our state, and then we can reevaluate. Okay. So um, yeah, that's that's my, my my question. Remind me again, why did we kind of stop at that thirty-six million? but not go a little bit more? Uh, to be honest, I knew that I wanted to gradually work our way. We didn't want to do it all at once, subjecting ourselves to the interest rates right now. So I thought it would be palatable to suggest a cautious start at halfway. Did I pick it right out of the, uh, out of the air? Maybe. But I, I also want to uh, build confidence and credibility with you, the governing body, and with the mayor and with the finance staff. So I think we're doing that. I, because ultimately, we're going to say, how much do we need to keep in the state pool anyway, and how much can we put to work? And since we have a long trend, we can see what the seasonal fluctuations are. There's not many surprises in the city budget. Got it. All right. Thank you. I think that's the only question I have, actually. Okay. Chairman Tran, we have a uh, council member Adolphus. Uh, Asafa. I always said it wrong. Dawson. Dawson. Council Thank member Asafa Dawson, go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you for trying to say my name. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> so the new business or the business licenses that you mentioned. Yes. Um, do you know how many are new businesses by any chance? I, I hesitate to speak terribly authoritatively, but I think these are all new business licenses. I think it's Chase. Uh, Chase. That is correct. That is correct. And They're all new businesses. For this, how about for the pre, uh, prior months? Each month is the new business licenses for that month. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. That's good to know. Thank, Thank you, Chase. 
Uh, um, I have one more question, if you don't mind. Un under jail services, I don't see, and I might be missing it, um, our average ADP, it says a year-to-date average ADP has been 26.3, but what was last month? Because we were getting a monthly ADP. Ah, which page is that? Oh. That is on page 159. Mm-hmm. I don't think I know, but that would be good to add on a monthly basis, right? Yeah, well, we used to get it, yeah, so mm -hmm. it would be nice to have that back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, well, Chair Chan, uh, if we're no more questions, I move to forward the October 2021 monthly financial report to the December 7th, 2021 consent agenda for approval. A uh, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions or discussion? There are none. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, no matter, pass 3 0. Thank you. And we are coming down to the last item, December 2021, FedBack meeting. Uh, Chairman Tran, City Council traditionally limits the number of meetings in December, so staff is prepared, if you'd like, to bring the November and December AP and payroll vouchers and the financial results to the following meeting in January. Uh, uh, the, the December meeting, if you held it, would be December 28th, which is between Christmas and New Year's, so... Uh, Staff is suggesting that you will probably want to make the next meeting uh, January 25th. And you've seen in the finances that the, that the revenues and expenses are in good shape and staff tries not to schedule any surprises or crises in December. I say that tongue in cheek. <laughs> we'll bring you to the results to the next meeting. <laughs> but if we miss the December 28th, we are going to really miss you guys, right? <laughs> No. <laughs> no, I'm on my way to Hawaii. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not missing. No, I, I, I actually very um, supportive of that. I mean, staff and <laughs> council members deserve uh, their long vacation with their family. So, yes, mm -hmm. I agree. We'll um, meet uh, in January instead. We will miss you and we'll, we'll bring you double reports. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, that, Bye, Lydia. That will Bye -bye. Uh, conclude <laughs> our meeting. And... Once again, thank you very much. Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Chair. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving. Happy you too, right. Lydia. Good to see you, Lydia. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.